Hi everyone, this is Nancy at Sitting and Painting Hamden. Today I'm gonna to show you how to paint this lovely painting called Tree of Life. Okay, so we're starting with a 16 by 20 canvas and your canvas may be a different size than that, no worries. Just make sure the brushes you use are appropriate for your size of canvas. I'm using a small, medium, and large. The small and medium are flat brushes. The, um, pardon me, the large and medium are flat brushes and the small is a round brush. But as long as you have a variety of brushes, I'm sure you'll make it work just fine. I also have napkins. I have an apron on. I have water, my nasty old water jar. And I have primary color paints blue, red, and yellow, but I'm also gonna be using black and white. Now for our uh, classes at Sipping and Painting Hamden, uh, we work with a very limited palette, red, red, white, and blue, and then black and white, um, because we wanna teach you how to mix paints to get other colors like orange and purple. So we're gonna show you how to do that. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do, we always wet our canvas here with a little bit of water. We do that because Denver's a dry place. Um, if you are in a place that's not as dry, if you're not out west, if you're in a humid area, you might not have to do this, but our paints dry very quickly here because it's so dry. So I'm gonna go ahead and just cover my canvas with a little bit of water so that when I do paint, my paint will not dry out before I finish the coat. All right. So I've got my, my water on my canvas. Next thing I'm gonna do, and this sounds a little bit odd perhaps, but what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put white paint, big clump of white on my large brush, and I'm going to paint white paint in the center here. Now you might ask yourself, why are you painting white paint in the center on a white canvas? And I'll tell you, I wanna make it so that when I do put on my yellow, it will blend easily. It'll be nice and smooth and blend so that you won't really be able to tell where the white starts and the yellow stops. So that's, that's the method to that madness. Then I'm gonna pick up a whole bunch of yellow. I didn't even clean my brush. And I'm going to coat my canvas with lots of yellow. And I'm just gonna go around. Now be careful not to flip, flick your paint in your drink. Today I'm drinking hot tea because it is the afternoon. This evening, when I teach another class, I might switch to a glass of red wine. But for right now, I'm using, I'm enjoying a cup of hot tea. It's always nice to have a beverage while you paint. If you want to turn on some music where you are, please, by all means, do that as well. I can't play music while I'm teaching because YouTube uh, doesn't like it when people use other people's music. That makes sense. I can respect that. And unless you own the music yourself, YouTube won't let you play it, which is fine. But you can play it at your house, no problem. All right, now a little bit about this painting. I hope to improve upon this one a little bit, we'll see. You'll be the judge at the end. But the thing about this painting that I really love is I love the idea of the tree of life. It's a spiritual idea uh, for those of you who, um, uh, are biblically oriented. Um, the whole mention of the tree of life is, um, is basically the teachings of the Bible. You don't have to be a religious or a spiritual person to appreciate this painting though, because it's also a symbol of genealogy um, and your ancestry. So basically the general idea is that the tree of life um, represents your life. And who you are in the world. Everyone comes from a community, uh, comes from ancestors and then their local community. And those are our roots. Our lives are the trunk and what our life becomes or our children or the gifts that we leave to the planet, uh, to humanity, those are the branches. And then just like life, we can color the leaves on our painting in any color we want. We get to decide what our legacy is in life. And in this painting, we get to decide what colors we wanna put in our branches and how many branches and how far they extend out. 
all of it is a big metaphor for our lives. Did you notice how I left the white in the center and then I painted around it? Now I did have yellow on my brush still. And so I trying to use that up. But even when I use that yellow and I go in my white, it's still pretty bright. And that's exactly what we wanted. That's why I put the white on first so that there's light behind the tree. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and enjoy my sip of wine while you catch up with that step. If at any time you're behind, just go ahead and stop your video and then you can catch up. All right, notice that there's green down here. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix some green. And green is just some yellow and a little bit of blue, that's all it is. Yellow and blue together make green. Now, depending on your paint, you may need to put in more yellow or more blue. We, this is a, the blue that I'm using, uh, looks like a phthalo blue. And then I have magenta and chrome yellow, but really any yellow, any blue, any red will work nicely for the blending we're gonna do today. I'm gonna use this green that I just mixed up and I'm gonna put it on the bottom of my canvas. And yes, I'm going over the yellow, that's fine. No worries, it's all good. It's all good. And I'm covering the bottom in, in my case, this is a 16 by 20 canvas. So I've got about five inches here of grass. If you have a smaller canvas, you'll have to think about how much you think is the right amount. But basically it's just the bottom of the painting, probably about a quarter of it. So if you divided this painting in half and then in half again, so here's half, half again, it's the bottom quarter. So half of a half equals a quarter, right? So the bottom quarter is the grass. Now, normally if I were painting grass, I would probably go ahead in and I would put tufts of grass and detail, but I'm not gonna bother because we're gonna go over that with some roots in a few minutes. Again, go ahead and stop your video until you catch up, even, even though I'm gonna go ahead. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead. I'm not gonna clean my brush because I'm gonna use black and already, there's not much you can do to that color right now. It's, um, black has all the colors in it. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna make my trunk. Now I can always make it thicker. I can't easily make it thinner. I'm gonna also make sure that it's wider at the base. This is a big old tree. This isn't a skinny new tree that was planted in the last year or two. This tree has been here a long time, maybe a hundred years. It's a big tree. It's the kind of tree you see back, back in the East. Not so much in Colorado. Although we do have some big trees out here. So I have my trunk and it's wider at the base. And of course that makes sense. Uh, trees are wider at the base so they don't fall over. And then from the top of the trunk, I am going to branch out and I'm going to, I mean, it's literally branching out. I'm just gonna pull up from the inside of the trunk. I'm gonna pull up and make a big branch. And the branch is gonna be wider at the base wider where it leaves the trunk. And on this one, I'm gonna go straight up a bit. Now you could do your tree any way you want. And then I'm gonna come out. And then it's gonna go up a bit. And then it's gonna come out again. Go up a bit. And maybe this one's gonna come out here, and it's gonna go up a bit. 
Let's look about there. I'm gonna keep going. But notice how it gets thinner as it goes up because a tree normally really would get thinner as it goes up because it gets wider. It continues. You've seen tree rings before. It continues to grow wider as it goes up. Now, if you want your tree to have a lot of personality, you can even have the have it grow a little lower. Why not? It's your tree. You do it however you want. Helps to make that sound. Now we're gonna we're going to add a lot of more detail to this tree, but that's a general idea. Do you want the trunk to get smaller and thinner as it goes up and the branches to come off? And notice how uh, these two came out pretty much from the same space. This one may be a little lower, but then as it goes up, they're not exactly the same on each side. And that's a good thing. You don't want it to be the same on both sides. You want it to look like the tree is unique. So here's the thing about when you're putting on your limbs, always go from the trunk out and up, from the trunk out and up. If you go from the sky and then pull in and down, wherever you start first, that's where you're gonna leave the most paint. And then you're gonna have less paint on that brush. So as you go up and out, you're gonna have less paint, okay? And so if you start in the sky and then come into the tree from the sky like this, ooh, I don't even like doing it because I don't wanna mess it up. But if you do that, you're gonna be depositing more paint at the tip way out here in the sky. Not a good idea and I'll tell you why. If you come in from the trunk, it's getting thinner and thinner. If you come in from the sky, it's getting it's thicker out here, right? And it will start to look like a cactus. So there's nothing wrong with cactuses. Cactuses are beautiful. However, that's not what we're painting. So always start in the trunk to make branches and then in the branches to make smaller branches. And then when you're making your branches, make sure that this area here where they attach is the widest part of the branch. So that's why come out from the big branch into the little branch. And then I lighten my touch so it gets thinner as it goes out. Thinner as it goes out. And I wiggle my brush because I wanna make sure that it's crooked. There's no straight lines in nature and your tree will look more realistic if your branches are crooked. So here's from the branch into the smaller branch and then out and I'm twisting. Oops, now that's got a big knot at it. That's okay, so I can come back in, make this a little wider and then right up to the knot. So now it ends in a sharper point and that's exactly how it would grow. So from the big branch, widest at the base where it touches the bigger branch and then lighter touch so that it ends in a point. And I'm gonna do that and make a lot of branches. Heavy touch when it's first coming out of the branch and then lighter touch, lighter touch to get thinner, thinner, thinner as it goes out. And put on as many or as few as you want. Just don't come in from the sky. Remember, don't come in this way. Go out from the branch and try to twist it as you can. Anything, any mistakes that you make, we can probably cover over with leaves and no one will know the difference. So don't worry about it too much. Just try to get the hang of it. And have fun with it. And notice that my branches are, they're all crisscrossing each other. And since this is just black, it's really hard to know 
which crisscrossed ones are behind and which ones are in front, but it doesn't really matter, right? We're gonna be covering all of this with leaves. And you'll only see some of those branches once you do it. Make sure your branches go in a multitude of directions because that's how they would in real life. They're all competing for sunshine. So they're just growing every which way. And if you think about this as a family uh, metaphor or a symbol of your family, it's just like a family. Families go off in each, lots of different ways too, right? And each one is unique. Now this one is coming up a main trunk, so I need to make that bigger. Wouldn't make sense if it were too thin. Anything coming out of the main trunk has to be decently wide. All right. So just keep pulling and twisting and coming out from the branch. And then go back in and make sure all of your branches have this little shoulder, this thicker part where it attaches to the bigger branch that it's on. So a little thickness at that area where it comes out of its parent branch, if you will. Just make sure it's a little thicker there. It's almost like your arm has a shoulder, thicker right here. And then Let it, let it go and get thinner as it goes out. And twist, twist and pull. I like that. I think this one needs. And they don't have to be symmetric. They don't have to be perfect. Symmetric or symmetrical? Symmetrical, I think. They don't have to, nothing needs to be perfect. Just relax and enjoy it. Like I said, most of this is gonna be covered by leaves anyway, but I think we've got a pretty good tree going on here. Can probably pull out some of these branches all the way to the side because this is a tall trunk, so that's, that's a good sized tree. So it's going to have good sized branches. I don't know what kind of a tree this is, but the kind that sheds leaves is called deciduous. And deciduous trees can be happy trees too. They don't have to be pine trees. All kinds of trees. Now see how I did that? Watch. Look here. Look at how that's thinner there and that's fatter. That's more like a cactus. So I've got to fix it by going fatter and then bringing it in. And then this will come off and get thinner. That's the idea. All right. So always come out and pull up, come out and pull up, come out and pull up and out. This one's got, isn't fat at the, where it's attached, so I can just increase that a little bit. All right, so go ahead and stop your video and catch up, okay? Because I'm gonna move on to the roots and I wanna make sure you have enough time. So right now I'm gonna pick up some more paint and I'm gonna come out from the bottom of the tree from a fat root, a fat root. 
And I'll do the same thing on this side, have it meander, but at the base of the tree, it, it's fat. See that? Reminds me of um, octopuses, octopi, something like that. But it's fat where it attaches to the tree. And if you were a little kid playing in a park, you probably saw these kinds of roots sometimes coming out of the bottom of a tree. Usually they don't, they don't all stick above ground. But the reason we're painting it that way is because it's the, the general idea of a tree of life. We want to be able to see the roots so that we can talk about them, right? So we can appreciate the meaning of the tree of life. That one's really wide. And those crisscross each other. They would in real life, probably. That's maybe thinking that they might. We'll see. We can also add another kind of strange. But you, your tree is going to be unique. As unique as you are. And remember, if I don't like that, I can always cover it over with leaves. No problem. No problem. And you can also have some other roots coming out of your roots, just like the branches on top. Just like the branches on top. Now, in the metaphor or the symbol of the tree of life, your roots are your community. This is how you became who you are. These are the people that raised you. These are your ancestors that gave you your physical being. These are your neighborhood, maybe your faith group. Whoever played an influence in your life, that's who we're honoring by thinking of the roots. All right, we don't wanna overdo those. They're there, they're cool. But we wanna not have it compete with the top of the tree. It's similar, but it's smaller because we wanna really emphasize the beauty of where life is going, right? This is where it's been, this is where it's going. <clears throat> As you paint, remember, always clean your brushes really, really well in between cleaning, changing colors. You can always go over each drop, each leaf with other colors and let them blend. But for this black step especially, clean your brushes really well because we're going to go from the beautiful black tree to uh, some other colors. Actually, I was thinking about going into the white first, but you know what? Let's go ahead and let's just add some brown to this tree to give it a little texture, okay? And the way you make brown, remember when we made green with blue and yellow? To make brown, you just pick up a little bit of red and you stir that into your green. Who knew? I'm only going to need a little tiny bit of it, so don't make too much. Don't go into the middle of your paint color. Save it, you know, just use a little at a time. So I've got this color that's kind of approaching a brown. It's a little on the red side, so let's see. I can try it and see how that looks on my tree. And I'm just gonna add some texture. Yeah, it makes a nice brown. I'm gonna add some texture up in my main trunk just by pulling up, starting at the roots and pulling up and pulling up and leaving some streaks. Now I'm not gonna paint the whole thing brown. I'm just gonna put this little brown highlight in the center of my biggest branches. I'm using a medium brush for this step. I'm not going into the small branches that I did with the small brush. I'm just letting the medium brush just highlight 
the bigger branches, just the bigger ones. You can see it just adds a little more dimension by just putting a little brown over that black. And that's how a tree would be, right? It wouldn't be solid black, it wouldn't be solid brown. It would be a mix of colors. And we still wanna keep it dark because we have so many bright um, leaves to put on. And so I wanna keep the tree dark. I'm not gonna put gray on top, but that's the general idea is just to add a little bit of um, texture by adding some brown streaks, okay? Once again, the way you make brown, yellow plus red plus blue. If you already have yellow plus blue and green, then you just have to add red. One more thing that I'm gonna do to that tree. Okay, there's my brown. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of white, just a little bit. And I'm gonna mix it in with that tiny bit of brown that I have, just a little bit. And I'm gonna make a much lighter shade of brown, much lighter, see that? And with that, I'm just gonna highlight the sides of my trunk. Why would I do that? Because the tree has a strong light behind it, the sun, and this is the light that is coming around the sides of the tree. And then you could do it a little bit up the bigger branches, but don't do it too much. It's just adding a little texture, a little light color near the edges. And I'm gonna pick it up and show you. You're probably thinking, I can't see light. But hold on, I'll show you. Okay. Okay, do you see it now? A little light coming around the sides of the tree. All right. And then be sure that you clean your brushes really well. I swish them in the water a ton. I let the water do all of the work. When I have little kids in here, I tell them swishy, swishy, like a little fishy. And I ask them to do it to their ABCs. Now, of course, with adults, I'm not gonna insult you, but that's the general idea is just to rinse them really, really, really well in your water, let the water do the work. And then, you won't need as many napkins because you won't be using them to get color out so much as just dabbing and checking how clean they are. I'm all about saving trees because I like trees. All right. So while you're doing this, go ahead and stop your video. I'm going to go ahead and go on to the next step. So I'm gonna take a clean medium brush and I'm gonna go into just white paint. And I'm gonna put some white marks in between the branches with my medium brush. Now you might say, I've never seen a, yet a white leaf. And yeah, that makes sense. However, here's the thing. The reason I'm using white for these leaves that are in between the branches and close to the tree, and then up near the surface of the grass is because when light hits a leaf, sometimes the light is so bright, it leaves, it, it almost makes it look white, just where the light is hitting it the strongest. And we're gonna go back over with other colors and some of these colors are gonna overlap others. So it might not be the entire leaf is white, but just the general idea of the ones that are in the sunlight, unobstructed sunlight, they're gonna have this hint 
of sunlight on each and every one. And we're painting that sunlight first. I know it sounds crazy, but you're gonna have to trust me. On this one, it's a little more willy nilly. It's a little more footloose and fancy free. That's another way to do it. So if you'd rather just use all your colors and let her loose, go ahead. If you're painting with children, let them just do it. Why not? But if you want to do it a little slower and thinking about where light would actually be, then paint along with me. Either way is fine. Notice I'm not painting it over the branches. I'm painting it in the sunlight behind. And then again, the top of the grass would have some because it's wherever. And then some of these are just kind of falling because it's autumn and they're falling. Okay, then I'm gonna, with that same brush, I didn't even clean the white off. I don't need to really. I'm gonna put yellow on and I'm gonna intersperse those with the white. Maybe some won't be overlapping the white. And for sure you've seen yellow leaves. There are yellow leaves all over the place in Colorado in the fall because our aspen trees turned yellow before they, well, they turn, they're green, they're lime green, and then they turn a darker green, then they turn yellow. And then they, well, they have all kinds of beautiful colors in, in them. Now you don't have to perfectly overlap the yellow and the white, but just know that it's the same basic idea that the yellow is still a light color. So it's gonna, it's gonna be dancing and playing with the light. Now you can also put the yellow over some of your tree. Why not? Yeah, someone's horn honking. Let me just check on that. Make sure it's not my car. Nope. All right. So I'm going to keep putting on some yellow with my brush. Now, this yellow isn't very opaque, it's kind of see through. And normally, I would add a little bit of white to my paint to make it a little more opaque, to make it pop out more. But since I already had white on my brush before I picked up the yellow, it's already mixing a little bit anyway, and that's a good thing. But if you can't see your yellow, go ahead and put some, mix, swirl some white into it and your yellow will show up more. All right, so we have white leaves and we have yellow leaves. I'm gonna show you how to make orange, okay? I'll throw a few more, these light ones down here. Maybe a few here too. All right, so orange is just yellow plus red mixed together. So I haven't even cleaned my brush yet. All these colors play really nice together in the sandbox, the white, the yellow and the red to make a beautiful orange. And I'm not using all my yellow, see that? I wanna save some for when I have other colors. Just mix a little at a time. I can always come back and mix more. And now I've got some yellow, sorry, some orange. And put them wherever you want. I'm putting them a little farther out than the yellows because um, they're a little closer to me now. They're not behind the tree so much. So I'm gonna put them a little farther down here and a little farther out than the yellow before. 
around the trunk, I mean. And you can put them anywhere. Now, when I paint this painting, because I really want it to be a metaphor for the book of life, and life to me is about color. It's about, we meet lots of different people from all walks of life, all shapes, all colors, all religions and languages, and uh, they each influence our lives and our families uh, have lots of uh, colorful characters in them, every family does. You know that from your Thanksgiving meals, right? And uh, each person has a different story to tell. And so all of the colors that I put in my painting, I, I like to put in a lot of colors. So I'm gonna be putting in every color I can think of. But if you want it to be more realistic and just fall colors, then after the next step, when we put in red, then just go ahead and stop there. You can stop there and it will look much more realistic than the tree I'm gonna do. The tree I'm gonna do is gonna have every color. So you decide, do you want a more realistic tree? And if so, white, yellow, orange, and red will probably be as far as you wanna go. But if you want it to be a not realistic tree, but definitely a fun one that is just more of a metaphor for life, the colors of life, then go ahead and paint all the way with me. You decide, you decide. Your tree, your world, your painting, your life. You decide. Don't let anyone tell you how to do it. Well, unless you want them to. I'm going to make sure that they go all the way out to the sides. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is red. And this is just straight on red, straight on red. That really makes the painting pop, doesn't it? I like to go. <laughs> Pardon me. The air is so dry in Denver. I'm uh, painting this on still early January. <coughs> Pardon me, 2021. And every winter I get a cough when the heater is on because the air is so dry. But this winter, because it's during the pandemic, I panic a little every time until I remember, oh yeah, I always cough in the winter. I feel fine. I hope you and your family are okay. I know so many families are suffering or have lost people. And some of those people are customers of ours or people that are family members of our customers and my heart really goes out to all of you. We want people to come back safe and healthy when the, all of this is over. Now I'm really liking this painting as it is and it would be very tempting to just stop right where we are, right where we are. So if you did that, I'd completely understand. Well, 
All right, so I'm gonna stop right now and I'm gonna let these, these warm colors dry. I'm gonna let this dry for about five minutes and then pretty soon I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna put on my other colors, green and purple and blue. Those are not normal fall colors. So you don't have to paint those if you don't want to. They're definitely not normal. But to me, like I said, it's a metaphor. So you decide, okay? It's beautiful just the way it is. You can stop there or you can keep going when I come back. But I, I recommend taking a break. I always recommend that. If you get up and look at your painting from far away, you'll be able to see it the way other people will see it. And then you'll have a better idea of, do you wanna keep going or not? Uh, you don't have to keep going. You just don't have to. You decide, your painting, your world, you decide. All right, I'm gonna leave that alone for a bit. Be sure to step back, step back 10 feet away, five to 10 feet away, and to take a look at your painting. So you can really see it the way other people would. All right, I'm gonna continue on. After red, we're gonna do purple. And the way you get purple is you mix together red and blue. I'm not gonna use all of my red or all of my blue. I might need those. So mix a little at a time. That's how we always do it. And Mine are creating a very, very dark purple. So I'm going to pick up a little bit of white and I'm gonna swirl that in so that I can see the color I've created better. So I can see the purple better. And now I have purple that I can see. All right, so I'm gonna take that purple and I'm gonna to start to dab. Dab it wherever you want. Those leaves, they're blowing all over the place. A lot of them fell down here. They're everywhere. And some of them are mixing with my other colors that aren't perfectly dry yet, and I'm fine with that, that's okay. In my life, those purple leaves are sisters, both the blood kind and the kind you meet along the way. Those ones who tell you, go ahead, wear purple. Have fun in your life.
those are the ones you want to go on a sister's trip with. I want to encourage you, tell you, you can do anything. The friends you want and the friends you want to be. All right, so I've got plenty of purple. Then clean my brush and now I'm going to go into straight on blue. And now I'm going to do blue. Why not? And the blue is definitely darker than the other colors and it does it does tend to make your painting darker which is fine um, but if you don't want it to be too dark you might want to go easy on the blue and then the last color we're going to do is we're going to pick up some blue i'm going to move it over here and i'm going to make more green so green will be the last color that i'll do Unless you want to put more white on after, that's fine too. So there's my green. And right now this is looking like a parade, Thanksgiving Day parade. It's got every color in the, in the world, it seems. Every color just dancing and playing and getting along and having a great old time together. That's how life should be, right? That's how the world should be. Everybody just getting along and playing, hanging out and enjoying it. All the beauty life has to offer. Dancing together in the wind and in the sunlight. If only every day could be so free. If only everyone got along as well as these leaves. Something to aspire to. And work on. Now, if you want to, you can always come back and put more white in anywhere you want. Now, my white is mixing with all the other colors and that's fine. The white just adds, like I said before, a little bit of sunlight and light in general to your painting. And it just gives it a little bit of sparkle and shine, but you don't have to have it. Just take a look and see, do I like that? Do I like what she's doing? And if you don't, don't do it. Your world, your painting, your tree of life. Oops, oh my goodness, great big clump. <laughs> A happy accident. All righty then. I'll have to figure out what to do with that one, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna panic. <laughs> that is funny. No panics. Don't worry, be happy, right? We'll fix it. We'll fix it. I'm gonna have to let that dry actually. I'm gonna let that white blob that I dropped dry. 
I'm going to actually fold up a piece of clean napkin the same size as that blob. And I'm going to try to pull off what I can. And then I'm going to let it dry and I'm going to paint over it. No worries. I'm not going to, I'm trying not to smear it too much because I want, I don't want it to create even more. But you can paint over just about everything if you let it dry. Just let it dry. Like you didn't even know it was there, right? I'm gonna let that dry and then I'll put a few more pops of leaves and no one will even know it was there. All right, so I have blue, I have purple, I have green, I have white, I have yellow, I have orange, I have red. Uh, against a black and brown tree. And I'm feeling like this is a pretty good representation of life. What do you think? Now, uh, the sample painting is much more yellow. If you like that better and you wanna go with more yellow, go for it, knock yourself out. If you like it with more colors like mine, then do that. Again, this is your world, your life, and no one can tell you what your tree is supposed to look like. Only you know what yours is supposed to look like. And sometimes we don't even know. Sometimes we just paint and we let nature or the world or the universe take its course and we get surprised too. So if you don't know if you want more on, look at what I'm doing and say, do I like what she's doing or not? Do I want it brighter? I'm, I'm focusing on the left side so you can see. This is brighter now, see that? That's brighter, has more yellow. Do I like that or do I wanna leave it darker and more mysterious? You decide. You decide. You pretty much can't even see the tree behind all this paint now. But I'm being careful, very little pressure because I don't want to just smear all the colors and make brown. So I'm trying to paint this yellow. And, and like I said, you don't even have to paint this extra little step of little extra yellow. But if you do, just go easy. Don't, don't put it over wet paint if you can help it. Shoot for areas that are already a little dry because if you if you just keep painting one color on top of another without any consideration of where you're painting, you will eventually just get brown paint. And uh, so just kind of keep that in mind, okay? I'm gonna just a little bit more, just to make sure that yellow is equal around the canvas to the best of my ability. And I gotta make myself stop. Sometimes I have, I love painting so much, uh, and I have so much fun doing it. Sometimes I literally have to slap my own hand and say, Nancy, stop painting. Yeah, it's embarrassing. If you're walking by the studio someday and you see me slap my hand, talking to myself, you'll know why. It's because I wouldn't stop painting. All right. So be sure you step back about five, 10 feet, and take a look at your painting from farther away.
And you can't even tell where I messed up down there, can you? All right, that's it. I need to walk away. I'm done with mine. I hope you had fun. I hope you enjoyed painting with me today. Um, yeah. Notice that there's more white on this section. Maybe I should put a few more on that corner. But step back five or 10 feet away so you can see what you did. And then if you have any tweaks you have to make, go ahead and make them. But just remember, if you keep piling wet on wet, eventually you're gonna have brown. And the whole point of this was to have a colorful tree, right? So go easy, go easy. Don't worry, be happy. You do you, I'll do me. And if you're painting with a child, let them do that, please. Uh, we have a lot of, uh, we used to have a lot of kids classes here. Um, since the pandemic, we haven't had any at all. But um, the one thing that I really love to see is kids express themselves without their parents telling them how to do it or without anyone telling them how to do it. Let them just have fun and express themselves and you will see that they will become happier children. It's amazing. Just absolutely incredible to see kids become uh, enjoying their self-expression because someone had the confidence and the courage and the kindness to just let them do whatever they wanted when they had art supplies. Don't worry that they're wasting art supplies. Don't worry. Don't turn them away from what they're doing by telling them how it should be done. Just let it happen. Let them do them. If someone told Monet and Van Gogh how to paint and not to do their style, we wouldn't have their style. So let the kids express themselves. Maybe they have something really spectacular to offer the world, but they need to practice a bunch first. They need, they need those years of play playing with paint, playing with colors, playing with their self-expression. Let them have it, please. All right, I'm gonna pop this one to death, so I'm gonna just leave it alone now. But I hope you had fun with me, did you? I hope so. A little bit more on the white parts. I'm looking in the camera lens to see the painting, but you can step back five to 10 feet away and see yours from a distance, will you? please, by all means, because then you'll see what others see. You'll see what it'll look like hanging on your wall. And then paintings never look the same a foot away like this as they do when you step back. And so I really encourage you, step back, get some distance from your painting uh, and see what others would see. If you went into a museum and you put your nose in a Van Gogh or a Monet, oh my gosh, the guard would just freak out. Don't, so don't do that to yourself too. Let, let your painting have the same dignity. Step back, see it from a distance, just like you would any other work of art. And then you'll know what to fix it when you come back. All right, that's it for me. Thank you so much for painting with me today. It has been an honor and a privilege to paint with you. I'm gonna go ahead and sign my name at the bottom. And it doesn't really matter what color you use. Sign it in whatever color you want. But I'm just going to put my two little initials down here. I hope you will as well. And if you want to send me a picture of what you painted today, I'd love to see it. My email address is Hamden, H-A-M, Mary, P like Paul, D-E-N. That's like the street in Denver, Hamden. Then SIP, S-I-P, then the letter N, paint at gmail.com. Hamden, SIP, and paint at gmail.com. Send me the photos of your painting. I'd love to see them. Until we paint again, thank you so much for painting with me and happy painting. Cheers. <laughs>